Hello, good afternoon. You have just uh, here listened to the st presidential statement that was approved by the Security Council. We think that this uh, is a very positive result from the consultations that were undertaken uh, last, uh, last week. And uh, we think that it's a very positive text, an original text at the same time, uh, because it's a compromise, positive compromise, under the format and on, under the substance. It's not a resolution, it's a declaration, but it's more than a declaration. You can see that uh, in first place, there is a clear message, condemnation by the launching that took place on April 9. It's on all the same time reminding uh, North Korea, EPRK, to uh, fulfill its, uh, its, its duties under resolution uh, 1718. And at the, uh, at the same time, it calls for no more launching by uh, North Korea. But uh, the other part that is very important, we think, is the activation of the sanctions committee in terms that in, in the resolution 1718, uh, there is a paragraph 8 that uh, calls for specific uh, sanctions and the sanctions uh, committee will meet uh, in order to identify the different entities and the different uh, individuals that have to comply with this sanctions uh, regime. The committee, this uh, sanctions committee, that is uh, chaired by, actually, by the um, uh, permanent representative of Turkey, uh, has uh, to meet uh, to uh, have uh, some agreements on these issues before, uh, uh, until, until April 24. And if there's in the case, the, if there is no progress on these issues, the Security Council will reconvene on uh, April, uh, April 30. At the same time, I think it's very important to, to see that uh, this uh, presidential statement looks to the future, and looks to the future in the sense that it's calling to resume promptly the uh, six talks parties as an essential element and the appropriate forum to get the agreements that would lead to a peaceful solution to uh, the denuclearization of uh, peninsula uh, of the Korea uh, Peninsula, no? so we think that this is very important. The issue is a very strong, clear uh, message that uh, shows the unity of the Security Council to act on this uh, on this very important matter that deals with non-proliferation. I think now it's at the same time the role of uh, North Korea to really show that it's uh, capable, able to uh, fulfill this uh, confidence gap that exists before the international community for past action. Mr. Mr. Yes, President, please. have you agreed the details of the adjustments that you would like to see them carried on uh, on the list in chapter and uh, paragraph eight? And if you haven't agreed these details, how are you going to enforce them after the 24th of uh, April if the sanctions committee doesn't act because the agreement is not there? Yeah, the sanctions committee has to look for this uh, for this issue. It's the responsibility of the sanctions committee to see this uh, regime and all this at uh, the same time once that the sanctions committee will approve the basic uh, sanctions. It has to notify, of course, the, the, the members of Security Council, but also the members of the United Nations in order to fulfill and to apply these sanctions. But my question is, you say in the PRST that if the sanctions committee does not act by the 24th, this council will enforce these adjustments. But if you haven't got an agreement and the sanctions committee has not worked in details, this new adjustment, what are you going to enforce? The Security Council in this case would reconvene, but I think it's uh, uh, very difficult for us right now to prejudge what is going to be the work of the Sanctions Committee. But, but isn't this a, a uh, really treating this as a resolution? Because the original resolution said that within 14 days, if what had been adopted wasn't changed, then it would, that what was, it, what was there was, was, was adopted. And that was in 2006, so now in the name of a presidential statement, you say you're claiming that you're gonna change something that had to be changed over two years ago and that that, that can be done in a presidential statement and you're... 
Re resolution 1718 is, uh, of course, valid. And it's valid in the sense that it was not put into, fo into force at the moment on the san san sanctions uh, regime because the talks between the six parties uh, moved uh, in a very positive uh, direction. It was not considered at the time that this sanction should be applied. It was not the context, so there was this progress, and it's very clear that the, the statement of but the presidential nation. A follow up? But this said that it would go into effect if nothing was done in 14 days. So, in, in effect, you're reopening it, but you're also not asking why the six party talks have broken down. In 14 Who days. And what happened? So, you haven't done any investigation as, as far as. In 14 days, the sanctions committee have, uh, have the, as you can see, has the obligation to identify the different entities involved in this issue. So it's the sanctions committee that, of course, with some b databases that different countries have, that they will apply to this. Yes, so please. Yeah, the, the use of the word launch and not of, of, of missile or anything else, does this imply that it may have included a satellite? And also the use of the word contravention instead of violates. Is there, is there a difference that you see between the two? Can you describe why these two words were used and not yes. I think that the, you should see the, this statement as a compromise uh, between uh, the main interested parties, and this compromise reflects the language. There was a launch, it's not identified in the terms of uh, uh, no sufficient uh, data about the intentions, of course, seen perceived as some as a ballistic uh, missile, others that could say it was a, a satellite that was used, but there is no proof of that. There was a launch and that's, was, that was very clear and the technology that was used. Contravention is very clear. It goes against the existing resolution 1718. It's a reality, a violation of resolution 1718. I have a non-North Korea question, but I'll wait. Okay, yes, please. There's not unanimity on whether this is legally binding or not. What are the implications for that in terms of enforcing the sanctions? Well, I think it's very clear that, that you have this in the presidential statement that uh, there, there is a decision that touched directly the sanctions uh, committee. So that's why I say it's more than a declaration well, in sense. Members say it's not really binding. Are they bound to enforce the sanctions? Yeah, absolutely, because you will have the sanctions committee that is integrated by, by the 15 members of the Security Council that should agree by consensus on the measures that will be taken. Yes, please. Please, please. Madam Albright said in a statement recently that what North Korea is seeking is some sort of a respect for what it is able to do. Is there, was there a discussion in the Security Council at all as to how to approach North Korea? I know there's a six-party talk going on, that going on, but is, was there any substantive discussion at all before the resolution, this uh, statement was adopted? I think the, in one side you have a very clear uh, refusal of the challenge that the, this launch meant for the international community, and there is a clear refusal by the international community of the behavior on this on this uh, on this uh, matter. But at the same time, there is a call for resuming the talks on the six talks of parties and for dialogue. It's very clear that uh, there is the proposed to, to have a peaceful settlement on all the issues that are linked to North Korea.